Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art shaper, and today we are going to be painting this wonderful lavender field. And in case you were wondering, the name is Lavender Fields Forever. Check the description below for the materials, all the information, and a link to our webpage. Where Traceable is located, some extra information for this lesson, and of course a shout out to the 16 people who actually suggested and upvoted Lavender Fields Forever. It was like our number one by far. There's a really cool word cloud there that is really going to delight you. I hope you guys are feeling great today. John, my husband John, is on the mic. Hello. He has been fighting the internet, like literally like a gladiator battling the internet. Um, basically, if you're ever wondering why we're so late so often, someone in our neighborhood has a VCR. That's the very <laughs> short explanation. And yes, I'm about ready to go door to door. I'm like literally going to be like, do you have a VCR? Do you, I'm a YouTuber and you're messing up my show. <laughs> the fun of a historic district. So this is what we're painting today. I'm really excited about it. We're going to be doing it in acrylic paint. I'm going to explain to you every step of the process so that you can create this for yourself at home. Because that's really the fun part for me. And the goal of all of these lessons is that you start painting. So let's jump on in and look at those materials. So uh, we have some wishes on our 9 by 12 uh, artist panel. This is uh, one of the packs of Artist Loft canvases. It's just ready to go, ready to paint on. It's a hard surface and it's unstretched. I like them because they're easy to store, but it's not better than canvas or something. It's just, you know, also a surface that you could be on. Jennifer Burris has wished for some healing and some well-being. And some management of pain. Mary uh, is also wishing uh, for healing for her husband who had an accident. We just would like him to heal as quickly as possible and be back on his feet. Uh, Kimberly, also healing. And wishing that if you've got a wish out there, an unspoken prayer out there, that that gets answered. Uh, Lynette is a miracle for a little brush that she knows. Um, as supporters of St. Jude. I am so on board with this. I hope that there is effective treatment and cure and well-being so that everything in the family is okay. And remember, St. Jude is out there. If you have a young family member that needs help, you should check out their program. It's amazing and life-changing. I'm yeah. a big, big fan. No family has ever given a bill. Just fantastic. Catherine for healing and relief from cancer. Uh, for her brother and just in general for her family, they would just like to be free of it. And I'd like to see an end to cancer on planet Earth in my lifetime. Just not a fan of that. And I'd like to see it go. Uh, our paint colors today are titanium white, phthalo blue, phthalo green, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, and doxazine purple. <laughs> And so that's what we're going to be using today. Uh, the purple, not probably in the way that you expect as you look at this really fun painting. Let's get the background colors going and we're going to just jump right on into the painting part, which is my favorite part. Jump on in. Jump on in. Painting like part. Like you do. Like you do. No, I don't. You don't. I do not. I Ever watch jump you do. into the painting part. <laughs> I'm the do that watches the do. You're the do that watches the do? Yeah. Do, do, do. It was suggested that I actually sing Lavender Fields Forever. That could happen, but not right now. Stay <laughs> tuned. I love that I get to say that, by the way. Yeah. So I put out my phthalo green and my phthalo blue. I'm going to use that to make a phthalo turquoise for the sky. I've got my yellow out. I'm going to also put out my uh, quinacridone magenta and my ultramarine. Now. In this sky and in this painting, we will use the Diox purple, but only for some very deep values that we have. So I'm putting out the Diox purple. I love putting out paint on my palette. I think it's super fun. It may not be that entertaining to watch, though. It's if you just came by for the first time, you're like, is, am I watching this lady put out squeeze paint out onto a piece of paper? Not paper. See, that's why you should stay, so you can find out what it is I'm putting what is paint it? on. It is palette paper. Which is coated paper for paint. That's what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a special paper that's coated that doesn't let the moisture get through. So you can mix paint right on here. These are all the colors that I'm going to need right off the bat. I'll add the burnt sienna in a little bit. What's but that? First, I'm going to take my phthalo green and my phthalo blue. What's that thing you're using? Oh, this is an artist knife. This palette knife. I have a set of these. My, if you see the red knives, those are mine. 
but they're everywhere there's lots you can get them in lots of locations and it's a nice way to mix paint you could do it with your brush or in another way it's just a way that i very much enjoy and i'm mixing one part of the green to one part of the blue thoroughly so that means it's not going to be streaky or marbled it's just very much incorporated you know like a cake batter mm -hmm. Unlike biscuits, which you're not supposed to overmix. It, it reminds me of icing. Hmm? It reminds me of icing. It like, reminds you of icing. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to grab a number 26 bright ruby satin brush here. This is a brush for acrylic painting. has a nice firm filament. Works really well with your acrylic paints. And just real quick, I'm going to take those wishes that I put into my canvas and brush them out. I write these on. I write these on. I got a knot list because it messes with the auto caption not that that's not fun after but it does make it hard for our hard of hearing viewers to have any idea what i was talking about so i gotta get better in my pronunciation it's not gonna get that i bet later when we look at it, it's gonna be real funny <laughs> hopefully they'll get the ai on google and the automatic uh, captioning so good that it can even deal with my strange way of speaking now I'm going to go ahead and give my canvas a little extra mist. This is going to help me in the blending. Today, I'm going to try to get my blends without using any glazing medium, just using water in that mist. I'm going to show you how I do that. The first thing I'm going to do is pull out my white paint. Notice that I'm flipping and pulling the brush. This pulls, look how much of that paint I put into my brush. That's a lot of paint in my brush. You can even see that it's thickened down here. And I'm going to come down to the below third and i'm going to start making a curved stroke coming up with the white paint see how we've done yeah now you probably shouldn't because it's white on white so that's pretty much camouflage right that's how camouflage <laughs> works <laughs> then i'm going to take a little bit a little smidge of my yellow and start to work it into here and i'm going to be very relaxed about this see how we're starting out just a little bit relaxed. Oh, that's nice. A little bit of yellow. Now the center of this is the brightest part. That's where our sun is. So I'm going to keep that the lightest and I'm going to add a little more yellow to the outside edges and bring it in. If you've never painted before, you're going to notice that my brush is on the edge and I am just letting it come in a little bit, making very uneven streaks. See how that streak kind of comes out a little bit far? Yeah. And this one goes back. I'm trying to create a sense of a cradled sky on this side. Now, can I ask you? You can ask me anything. Is this uh, atmospheric perspective? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> so what's they call it when they round the shape? Well, what I'm doing is I'm implying that things are kind of in a fisheye. Okay, like you saw so... it through a fisheye lens. So I am creating a perspective, but it's not really an atmospheric perspective per se so it's more of a fisheye perspective <laughs> it's more of an effect that we can get oh okay now i'm gonna load a little bit of that yellow into my brush and i'm going to grab some of my turquoise into it and quite a lot of the white and right here while everything is still wet and if you're finding that it dries out you can mist with a micro mister you just don't want big water drops i'm going to come right here and start to blend Acrylic paint blends beautifully wet into wet. It just struggles when it's dry. That well, really actually, did. you struggle. It's fine. It, it it's totally just had this beautiful green, blue bloom to it. Didn't it do a nice job? Yeah. And that's just about making sure that those two painting areas are still wet when you go to mix them. I'm going to take this color all the way to the top because we kind of layer the sky. That's how we get the effect that we got. It's really rather fun. And then I'm going to make a nice little blend coming down. It's, sometimes it's nice to get a little bit of the turquoise. If you'll watch, I'm going to pull in. Well, this layer is still wet. Coming right there. There we go. There we are. Just pulling this in. There we are. Just a little bit of that turquoise. So we're just starting to talk about, I got to always do that weird lean. Now, when you see me do these very, see how I soften those blends? Mm -hmm. That's about going over it with a very light touch. So pressure, how hard you're pushing the brush into your surface can really impact your outcome on your painting. 
Stephanie asked a really interesting question. Hi, Stephanie! She was wondering, do you find it easier to blend on a canvas panel or a stretched canvas? I find it the easiest to blend on an ampersand artist board. Um, now, that doesn't have any texture. That's no, it's just like glass. It's amazing. It's just made for paint. It's just incredible. Um, <laughs> after that, I really don't find artist panels or canvas, stretched canvas, have that much of a difference. It's really about the quality of the surface, like how high quality it is. So, like, it's not, is it a canvas panel versus a canvas? It's, is it an artist loft versus a masterpiece canvas? Right? Mm. Like, if you wanted to have a really amazing painting experience, you're going to get ampersand, or you're going to get masterpiece. And you're going to have a beautiful painting experience, and you can put that on a fine linen with a beautiful, smooth finish, and that's fantastic for portrait work. But if you're just trying to get some economy canvases and packs, Really, the difference is about your preference about how your surface responds to you. Is it bouncy like in a canvas that's stretched or is it firm and resilient like in a board? And then also about stretching, storing and framing. That's really the difference. Hopefully that's helpful. I'm going to dry this real quick okay. so I can paint over it easily. I'm going to uh, do that. Uh, so while she's, say, while she's doing all that, I will say thank you, first of all, for coming and hanging out with us today. Second... Don't use heat if you're drying your canvas or surface or whatever you're doing. Now, second, go if you are looking for a one hoot painting, a two hoot painting, a three hoot painting, more projects to do, information about what's going on today, who we are, what materials we're using, all of that can be found in the description down below. Wow, I sounded like I rehearsed that, but I didn't. I just had a cup of coffee. Okay, so more on that. If you click on the website and you go to videos, then on that page, it's going to pull up a whole uh, bunch of videos, all of the videos we made. And at the top, there's two rows of red buttons. In those red buttons, if you hit one hoot, it'll pull up all the one hoot paintings on our website. And there you go. That's a good place for you to start. I am going to. I love my one hoot paintings. And, you know, you can always read the community's votes on those hoot ratings. So just to make sure that my sense of what I think is going to be not too challenging is the same as the community's sense of what is not too challenging. Mm. I'm going to get a bright brush here out of the bucket that I've got. Oh, no, actually, maybe I'll grab a cat's tongue. Listen, you can grab a bright, which is a square brush. You can grab a flat or you can grab a round. I'm going to use this number eight cat's tongue. I know a bunch of you just have some new ones in. I bet you're excited to get them out. And I'm going to go ahead and start sketching in a little bit of this bottom area just to start laying that in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of my brown with a little bit of my purple. Can you see those two together? Yeah, they like that. And so I'm going to come here and I'm going to make a relatively smooth little curve. I may want to actually miss this canvas because if you'll notice, it's not really wanting to take the paint and it's a very dry day. So if I'm not using a medium, to improve the flow of my paint, I can use water. Sometimes you'll hear people tell you that you can't use water. That would not be an accurate <laughs> thing about painting. You now, right about here, an inch over from the left, I'm going to make a mark. And then I'm going to come over here and a little closer than an inch, I'm going to make a mark. And I'm going to come right here. Let's get a little darker purple so we can really sketch this out. And I'm going to create the first part of the perspective. Now we're getting some perspective happening. Not atmospheric perspective, actual perspective, because at the vanishing point, our lines are converging and meeting up at the distance where our eyes can no longer see the horizon. So that's what we're trying to mimic or show. I think I remember the word I was looking for. Forced perspective. Forced perspective. Is that right? Yeah, this is a little bit of that. That's well, not, where you're... not too much. Not the same as like when you're like looking top down on a figure. I would say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be the most. I'm taking just the purple. And I'm just painting in my little triangle here. Right? Were... With this solid, solid purple. Isn't that well, nice? Are we going to be using black gesso in this? No. no. I must not have pulled it out of the description. Okay. Just wanted to just curious there. Yeah, sometimes that happens to me. The The descriptions can get a little busy and they have an auto upload that I can set and I put all the materials that I could possibly use in that and then I just delete the ones that I don't have. But sometimes if the day is like crazy like it was today, I could miss something like black gesso. There is no black gesso in this particular painting. Well, I'll go check that out. Okay. Get that now, 
from the corner just a little bit before the corner right coming off here to the vanishing point i'm going to add this little bit of purple and the purple is going to come right up to about here almost an inch up right we're not doing an acrylic ground on today's painting we are blocking in the painting because we have such different color ranges and we have a lot of transparent colors right here. So in this particular case, I'm choosing not to do that. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to come here from the end. I came a little bit close, but I'll come back with the brown and fix that. Because what I want is a little brown rivulet that's going to come across both. Let's come up about an inch here. Would you call that a rivulet? Rivulet. Rivulet. Rivlet. I think I made up a word. You did. I think those are called streams. No, I mean, it's like the gully that they dig with the thing that they plant the, plant the lavender in the little rows. Oh, so you, you're, you're calling them rivlets? I guess I am. Okay. That's, that's what, I mean, it's like on film. <laughs> what am I going to do? Deny it? <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> Seems to be cool now. <laughs> no, I never did it. <laughs> ah, it doesn't work on me. All right, okay. So <laughs> I'm going to go forward again with a little bit of purple. And just make another little stream in. Notice something here on these. So you can do this with other things later. These are thicker as they're closer to us. And then they get thinner as they vanish, don't they? Yeah. So it's not that hard of a one. But if you've never done it before, it can be visually kind of complicated. Do you think you'll be using glazing medium today? I'm going, I could use glazing medium. I like to always have that in the description because if you've been my student for a long time, you know, depending on your weather, you might need to have some, you know, in your paint box. Good to have in the toolbox. It's good to have in the toolbox. Um, having some type of uh, product or aid that lets you improve the flow of your paint is always a good idea. So I'm going to be doing the same thing here. You can see I'm coming up and coming in. As we fluff up these bushes, you know, it could change up a bit. But we want to just get these in. To fluff the bushes. Fluff the bushes. All right. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my magenta into my... Sienna, and I will just come in and begin the first little, the little fill in. We'll Jean. be making little corrections as we go. Jean just asked a really, Hi, Jean. she asked a great question, one of my favorite questions. I'm doing that. Everywhere I've got a white stripe, I'm going to fill in with that. See how we're doing? All right, tell me the Jean's she, great question. She asked about the one thing that I know about. Oh, okay, well then you can just answer She that. said, did you say don't use heat when you dry the canvas? You know, I tend to recommend against it, and here's why. I have a lot of beginning students, and beginning students will tend to go out and buy the most economical paint that there is on the market. Because you're getting started. You, and yeah, and you're like, I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars for this ha hobby that I may or may not be interested in. And m how they get the cost down on those products is to remove the pigment coverage and quality of the paint. The binders, how, all the, the stuff, all stuff gets inside there. So a lot of what I have going on on my channel, even though I paint with professional grade paints, is that I try to make adjustments um, to be aware that you might be painting with something that is not professional and plan my paintings for that eventuality. That, that being said, that's why I do those things. <laughs> if that makes sense. All right, can you kind of see how we've sketched in a little bit of this perspective already? Look at that. It's crazy how quick that goes in. Let's rinse this, rinse this, rinse this all out. And I'm going to get my big brush again so I can come back. Actually, I might do this next part with my cat's tongue. Let's, let's be rebellious. Make sure your water is clean when you're working your yellow. And the reason for that is, is that pigment can really dull yellow. And so clean water, whenever you're working your yellows, will help you a lot. Mm. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to make this sky area 
a little more vibrant and I'm going to also bring this up here and darken the aqua. Make some interesting effects. But I do want to keep, you know, oh, got to do the dirty water. And I don't want the dirty water. Now I'm going to take a smidge, a scotch, a small amount of this quinacridone. And I'm going to do what's called warming the yellow. I don't want it to be full out orange, right? I want to have a range from orange to yellow. So what I'll do is I'll get this and then I'll just, you can see, kind of mix it into that yellow and it deepens it. And I'm adding the water, just deepening it a bit. You can even get a little white in there to improve coverage. You'll find if you're painting um, that yellow has maybe your lowest coverage of your paints. I'm going to load up my brush. I'm going to come on the edge here. And if you're using a bright, you would do the same thing on the edge. Now, if you weren't using the exact same colors that you had in here. Yep. Is, is, is that going to be okay? Can... Nothing bad will happen to you. <laughs> you may have to experiment a little bit if you're using yeah, a different... Yeah, if I could do this with other colors, but all that would happen is, is that I would get a slightly different result. Now, notice that I'm coming here on the edge, and what I want to do is just dance on the toe of my brush, right, as you do. Just coming through here with this color, and then I'm going to come on this other side here, dancing on the toe of my brush, always my fave. Mm. Bring some of this right here kind of through, because we're talking about this fabulous sunset, and I think it's really fun to do. And you can kind of see how the yellow wants to glaze over the green. That's nice. And let's bring some of this yellow at this mid-range here, just to have it be present in the painting already. We're getting some drama into the sky. Really easy to get a dramatic sky going. Now for the next part, I'm going to actually start at the top here with my really dark turquoise, full turquoise. You notice I'm loading the brush the same way I loaded the bright. I'm pulling and flipping. And I'll keep the curve going on my brush stroke. This is an implied line, right? By curving the stroke, I'm implying a line or shape or visual effect to my canvas. Uh, Darius was asking... Hi, Darius. How are you doing today? Does the paint really make that big of a difference in the in the paint in, in the outcome of what you're doing i do not work for the paint companies that's not me i'm just a long time artist and what i can say from really really hands-on experience having painted um with both like almost every acrylic paint yeah quality makes a big big difference and i wish i could say it didn't but it does because i don't really like just want to just spend money randomly on paint and I do. But. You feel the effects of that paint everywhere from blending to mixing to the quality of what it shows to the long-term nature. So it doesn't, it, so it has lots of benefits. Yeah. But. From the immediate first brush stroke to looking at the painting 10 years later, the quality of your paint does greatly impact your outcome. Now I'm going to add a little white into this blue as I'm coming down. You see right here, I'm adding a little bit of this white. And I'll blend that back up into the blue. There we go. Oh. Get a little bit of water where you need it. It is okay to grab a little bit of the yellow as we're coming down to just make sure, see how we're doing, that there's a carry through between the two. If you've got glazing medium, you can use it here, or you can mist with water. The reason I'm kind of showing um, some of me using water is a lot of people have said, hey, I can't get this product. Is there a way I can do it? And I just want you guys to realize that in art, there's usually several ways to get through. Notice how I'm just pulling this turquoise down through here, just enjoying myself with it like you want to. There we go. So much fun, isn't it? Well, for me, it is super fun for me. <laughs> it's fun for you, too. All right, I'm going to pull a nice little streak of turquoise right here. Maybe one right here. So we've got this beautiful, beautiful sky. I'm going to rinse out vigorously, getting all the pigment out of my brush. Coming back. 
but maybe a stronger orange this time. See how we're getting a much stronger orange? And then I'm gonna come here and just make sure that the outer edges of this are kissed with a bit of orange. I'm gonna do this so we don't have too much drag. I do not soak the canvas. That method can really backfire on you if you soak your canvas. So be cautious. Be cautious. Oh, there were a couple questions. I I, I was uh, spaced out reading some questions. I'm gonna, like, Those are I'm really gonna add questions. some white to my uh, paint right now. So, uh, let's see, there was actually several folks Rushing that were asking about forth. this. Have you heard of the old Holland acrylics? And yes. What do you think of them? Thinking, I haven't, I haven't seen them around the studio much. Um, I think they can be difficult and hard to access. Um, I haven't done the complete palette of colors. I've done some. Um, I think in that same range, I like M. Graham a little more, but that's just a preference. If that makes sense. Mm, I would say that you're very carefully making a response. Well, because things aren't like an all or one on Old Holland. Like some things I'm like, no, or yes, but some things I'm like, ah, maybe okay. And the reason why you don't use some of those more uh, niche brands is they're harder to get a hold of. Right. Like I really, really love Holbein, like a lot. Um, got my mom completely sucked into it. Uh, it has less drag on the brush. It's got great pigmentation. They're super saturated in the color. I'm adding a little splash of orange here, as you do. And guess what we're coming up on? What's that? Well, we're going to get one more little orange bit out, and then we're going to have to dry. But that, that's why sometimes, like, I won't necessarily demo every paint out there. And, and, and they can be paints that I, I do think are good. There's a list in my Facebook group. i got to put it on the website of the brands of paint that I personally would put my money into, if that makes sense. Like, what do I spend my money on when I'm at the art store? It, you know, like, what are all the brands that I consider in my purchase set? And those are, again, not sponsor brands. It's just really honestly like, oh, I like these. And some of them may not be your favorites. It's just really about preference and experience. I'm going to dry this now with my hair dryer. Okay. And I'm also going to move this mat because it's really weird. Okay. Right. Oh, the so, uh, hold on. Let me go see. No, that's that's some comedy. I'm okay. Hold on. you guys. You want to see some comedy, or do you want to hear about like not drawing this? Probably you want to see the comedy. So let me go see if I can get her to move while I'm doing this. Ta -da! Chip a shuffle. Woo you may wonder why I dry between certain layers and not others. If I don't want a color underneath coming up into the one above it, I have to dry it. If I want the colors to interact with each other, like in this area between the green and the yellow, I leave it wet. That's generally how you make that decision as an artist about what you keep and what you don't. Guess what? Third color, third layer of turquoise. You ready? I'm ready. I find with phthalo turquoise, especially the one that I mix myself, it generally takes a few layers to get the coverage that I'm looking for. And the reason for that is that the thaloithecane colors, the modern colors like quinacridone, tend yeah. to be glazes, tend to be transparent over the traditional classic colors, which come from, you know, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Not even exaggerating here. A lot of them come from dirt, really pretty dirt. <laughs> That's, that's how painting got started. Somebody said, that's some really pretty yellow dirt. I bet I could do something with that. <laughs> now, one color, one way we get to purple in this is we actually mix our quinacridone into our thalo turquoise. I bet that surprised you a lot. But that's a thing that we do. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to start mixing in my dark value of clouds. And with the clouds, because the sun is underneath, the top of the clouds will be dark and the bottom of the clouds will be lit up. If you've ever wondered, how do I paint that cloud? I'm going to come zoom that out just a that second. That would be something that I am. Okay, I can just, I can move it back. There you go. Okay. So that was just the phthalo turquoise and the 
and the quit. And I'm gonna come right here and I'm just starting to make this cloud. So I'm gonna press my brush in. I want part of it to sort of be pointed and I'm gonna make an irregular little shape because clouds, they're all affected by wind patterns. And then I'm gonna pull this out here. There we go. That's a nice little cloud shape. And you're like, I'm gonna get some purple in this next bit. Let's get real deep. Let's get deep, let's get dark, let's get serious. So I'm going to bring from this corner, I'm going to come down and see how dark that color is. I'm going to pull this down. I want it to be about this wide into this space. There we go. Now, as I move forward, I can get right into my quinacridone, and even a little bit of white, still keeping it a dark purple but you can lighten it as you go or, or, or warm it up. Look at that. So that maybe as it comes forward. The reason I'll warm things up as we come forward on certain cloud objects is because towards the center of the sky, the clouds will actually have more light on them and therefore be warmed up. This is true of mountains, pretty much anything you're painting in the sunset. Wherever the sun is centrally focused, you'll want to warm those objects up just a titch. Just a smidge, just a small amount. Let's put a little cloud right there. And you, and you might be like, little cloud right there, that's what? But notice when I'm doing mine, I'll make a little mark and feel pretty okay about it. The big difference that you have going on for me is I can make a little mark and feel fairly confident in it. Look, I'm pressing the brush up and I'm coming down. Linda is and I'm curious. pulling it in. Linda, Linda was curious about Hi, Linda. your palette uh, squirty thing. Uh -huh. Can you use that to uh, wet the palette too? Yes. You, yes. I, I've seen you do that. <laughs> really saves the paint too. If it's one of those dry, dry days, I'm going to get all my quinacridone into this. Just keep going as I go down. I, I've got a little exciting news I'd like to share with everyone. Okay. So, you know that pinner kit right over your shoulder there? Yeah. So we just updated our shipping tools. So all of the all the kits that are going out now uh, ha we should get automated tracking numbers oh, that will be emailed to you. That's very good news for the store in the future, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I do believe that all the Pinners kits that have been ordered to date will be shipped either today or by Monday. Okay. Because we're re I mean, like we're most everything has been gone out. I'm pr uh, the now, keep in mind, those are all going out flat rate, so they take a couple days. But uh, this week, we just got our shipping tool updated, so that saved a whole lot of work. We were Thank you. We were individually packaging and shipping them. I, I can see how it would. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to let everyone know that. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my quinacridone. I'm going to grab a little white and mix it in there, and so it's going to make a... Very dark pink. You can grab some yellow into it, but you don't want to take it into the orange. Now I'm going to come here and add this pink cloud. I really like this cloud. So I come from the outside edge and I'm going to just, oh, isn't that gorgeous? Just love those colors as they pop against each other. Just pull this in. Imagine little wisps. These are my favorite kind of clouds. Everybody else likes the, the cumulus clouds, but I really like to paint me some wispy clouds. <laughs> I'm going to just keep pulling that in. Oh, uh, that was nice. Just pulling that in and making nice little shapes. Maybe there's a bit of it comes back. And you just paint that back a little bit. You just have fun with it and sketch it. I just come over this side. I'm going to grab the last of the paint and just make sure that there's something happening here and that's pretty wonderful now with the quinacridone right i'm going to come and i'm going to get just a smidge of my ultramarine just a smidge and you can see it's going to take it into a very warm purple i'm going to grab a bit of my white and more and i'm looking for i do want it to be purple but I want it to have a warm cast to it. There it is. That's the one I'm looking for. I'm going to come and take some of these clouds, you'll, you'll notice, and I'm going to warm them up towards the centers, right? 
I'm going to come underneath this one here. Just warming it up. And let's bring that nice warm purple through here. And notice, see, I'm putting it on the bottom, focusing it on the bottom. A sunset. Like that one here. So what you constantly will find yourself doing is you'll leave uh, some dark value to help showcase maybe some of that lighter value. And then as I come to the center of the cloud, I might you know, pull that there. Oh, is that fun? Well, it's fun for me. Hopefully it's fun for you. You can always, if you feel like you lost some of your deep value, you can always come back with your purple. Look at this and darken it up on this outside edge. You're never so like, oh, I can't ever get here again. Yes, you can. You can go back over. You can make additions. I'm just doing this just to show you how you can think about these things and enforce them and improve them. Now, this is a really good time to make sure you have clean water. My water is very dirty. So I'm going to have to get a glass of clean water if I can, sweetheart. Honey? Yeah, you want clean water? I'll get it. Oh, you're going to get it? Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll see. So I can turn around hold on. and say hi to everybody. One, two, three. Nope. There, there's a button. I pushed the wrong thing. I feel like you didn't. I'm just still looking at the back of my head for a really long time. I, I can't turn it off, turn it off. I think it's broken. I can't fix it. It's broken. Well, that's the back of my head, so you can see I did a good job today. <laughs> I pushed the button and it didn't do it. Information. There's nothing you can do. Sometimes you push the button. I was uh, doing editing on my phone today and I kept pushing the button and nothing was happening. And I'm just like, I just really want to put a little white frame around this. And if it would just do this and apply it, that would be amazing. But then it wouldn't do that. And it's like, you've just got to find your way through. I hope you guys are feeling good today. Um, at this point in your painting, what I'd like to say to you is, is remember that paintings have an ugly stage and that you will intrinsically, naturally, as students, be much more forgiving of my painting than your own painting. And very often, I will see you at exactly a similar stage to me, saying, I don't feel like I did very well. It's different than yours. So remember, one, yours is not supposed to be a photocopy of mine. You're you, and I'm me. And by that nature, we are going to paint intrinsically different. And that's just, that's beyond skill. That's just how human beings are. But on top of that, there's that hard perception that we give to ourselves where we judge ourselves really harshly and we are very forgiving of other people. So remember that you may be being harder on your painting than is actually necessary. Let's see and if I can find a button. No, no, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, it's going to see it like they go over here. We'll go, right here. We'll, well, hopefully by the end we'll do it. And if not, we'll say out like this. Let's get some warm color <sighs> going on. like oh, right oh, here. So I've got my pink. I'm going to pull that over. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow into it and warm it up. I love it a little bit warm. It's not totally an orange, okay. but it's a lot just... warmer. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of white. And Cinnamon, I'm... Um, hold on just a second. Okay. Are we not live anymore? No, we're live. Oh, the, okay. Um, switcher is not switching the correct screen now. Okay. Um, Do you need a minute to fix this out? I need a minute to see what's happening. Hold on a second. It's a good time to get a cup of coffee or possibly take a restroom break. Get some popcorn. Check the front door. Is there any mail? Definitely don't do any housework. Avoid that at all costs because you're painting right now, so don't get sucked into housework. Okay. Because you know that'll never stop. I'm going to try something. He's going to try it, something. Is it, is it take just a second? If Are we just ready? go off the air, you'll know what happened. No, but if we do, we'll be right back. We'll so, be right back. Hold on a second. Okay. Let's see if this is working. Are we back? Again. I think we're okay. All right. I'm going to move forward assuming we're back. So we've taken a little bit of yellow, mixed it into our magenta. It, not, it does not cut. I am not sure what is happening. Is it back or not back? Oh, we're back. We're live. Okay. It's just not cutting for me now. Okay. I can't, can't Okay, cameras. so we have no switching. Correct. Hmm. So if you'll bear with me, I'll fix it. But I have to fade to black again. So cinema, okay. I have to smile. venture hopefully we're back online and running again i think we were ready to put some highlights under our clouds 
before our fabulous and entertaining technical difficulties, I'm going to re-wet my brush and I'm going to go back and go over that color mix again, just in case you missed it because of all the stuff that was happening. Um, what? Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone magenta over here and I'm going to get a smidge of my yellow. I don't want to make it orange. I just want to make it warm and I'm going to grab my white to raise the color. So you can see that right there. It's like a peach. I'm going to come to my clouds a little more and I'm going to come up underneath these and I'm going to begin to put a little of this pink here, here and there, a little bit of the pink. You see the pink? Then we're going to come at the bottom here. It's fun to put the pink. Well, it's fun for me to put the pink. Hopefully you're having a good time putting the pink too. I'm touching the bottoms of the clouds and this helps me show that they're lit up. That there's this gorgeous, delicious, perfect, perfect day happening where the sky is as beautiful as the land below it. Let's put a couple little touches there and we come down. And you can see how this color helps you define and form some of the shapes of your clouds. You know, really see them and, and cover what they could be, you know, have going on. Put that there a little bit. Oh, let's put some of this, put some right here, touching around. Now I'm going to get a lot more white. And you can even get a little more yellow, a lot more white, even a little more yellow because we're warming it. So we've lightened it and we've warmed it. You can come up to this cloud right here and add some of these bright little highlights. Look at those. These are little pops, little focuses of color. See how they're right here coming along the edges? That's mm. really nice. All right. Thank you guys so much for being so patient. They And everybody came back. So it's they were, everyone, I think everyone just took a little break. They all went out and had a little snack. And everybody just came back. But nobody did any housework because we wouldn't want to encourage that. No, definitely not. <laughs> you must be like, what is your house like? Exactly what you imagine. All right. So I'm going to come underneath. And I'm going to just continue to lighten these clouds, finding little spots. See, what I'm really looking for is to imply that little peaks of sun, little little kisses of sun have come along and, and engaged our, our clouds a little bit. It's, it's kind of nice. Now, one last thing, I'm going to wipe out my brush. You can see I'm doing it here, and I'm going to get a lot more white onto it. And just a little more yellow. And just right here in the center here, I'm going to just add just a smidge of this. I know it seems fussy, but it really does help talk about what's happening with those clouds. Now, the rest of this is going to be in an orange range. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush out because I do want orange now, but I want a brighter one. So I've got my pink tops and I'm going to take my yellow and my magenta together, making a really lovely orange. You can grab some white if you need it. And I'm going to come underneath this cloud kind of oranging it up. See how we're doing? Yeah. Orange that up a bit. Because these have a little bit of orange space. There we go. Go way more into the yellow. You can see I'm just peeking that there. All right. What a fun sky. You will forget how easy and fun it is to enjoy yourself a little bit of sky. Now the last little touch that I want to do on this, right? Because I want a little more touch. I want a little bit is I can come here and get a little bit of my kind of deeper orange. And you can go ahead and put a little, little kind of implied orange distant clouds that could be happening out here. Be light, be easy with them. Everything is dry in the center. I'm going to take a little bit of my just white. And I do this cool thing. I'm just going to touch this out. Look at how it's like super like gloppy on my brush. Is that impasto? That is impasto. Yay, I remembered words. And it just looks stunning on a canvas. It really does. And bring a little bit up here and there. And it will make it feel like there's this hot, wonderful, sunny spot just happening right there. Now, I'm going to load up some of my 
magenta here, not my magenta, my sienna. And I'm going to come between my rows again. <laughs> now, I know I'm supposed to be like strawberry fills forever, but I swear I just went to he who walks behind the rows. <laughs> so there's a throwback to Mr. King. But this is not that. <laughs> In mm. any way, this is happy. <laughs> no, these are gnomes that walk behind the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not the gnomes that cause our, I, I saw some speculation, is it gnomes? No, the gnomes have not caused it. It is the gremlins and the trolls that cause these problems, the little gnomes, monsters. Gnomes are generally help. Yeah. Much, much like minions. Much like minions. But with more eyes and beards. You can see I'm just adding that, that strength of brown through here. Improving that and strengthening that. It really pops when the purple comes in. And you might need a little bit to really see it. And that's okay. All right, so we're just coming there and just pulling that in that gorge. Rinse out really, really well. Now at the outer edges of your space, you are going to want it to be darker than some of the other parts. So what I find is nice. I'm going to take a little of my uh docks purple and a little bit of my ultramarine here and mix them together it's going to give me a nice dark color and where i know i'm going to have you know a row i'm going to come along and just make sure that there's a nice shadow at the front so see how i'm creating that shadow at the front it's going to help me and it's okay I if it goes the shadow in the shadow i'm going to come forward on that shadow on the edge of my brush so like everything else here, the stroke is thickest at the beginning and gets thinner at the end. It does help that this brush lets me do that pretty easily. And I'm going to go ahead and get that going right here. And I'm making sure that that dark value is going to peak. And you can see where it layers over. It goes quite dark, doesn't it? Giving us that nice little shadow that we need on our rows. Now through here it is perfectly okay to bring this dark value through everything underneath. Even though we're going to be coming over in the mix of Quinn and Ultramarine, go ahead and make this value quite deep. Take it all the way to the horizon. It's going to really help everything pop. So back into our mix and just come up the other side doing the exact same. Same, same. Same, same, same. And you can see you can get these little rows right back in if you're having any trouble painting them. Hopefully you guys are still with me here. Oh, yeah. Still enjoying this. Very much so. All right. So we're coming back. We're just making sure that we're keeping track of our perspective. Just making that nice space. This is really works with grapes too. Hmm. Like rows of grapes. It's have quite lovely. Heard, have you ever heard of uh, ultramarine violet? Yes. I have never. Well, there's actually several ultramarines. Um, that's always about the pigment mixture. And then several companies have specialized mixtures in their paint. So they tend to do that. I wonder if I'm going to just stick with my one brush here. Let's see if I can stick with one brush. The one brush. To but one them brush. All. So I'm going to take my Quinn and my Ultramarine and I'm going to mix them together. And that actually is my base purple. You guys see that? More Thank blue you. is a darker purple, more red is a lighter purple. And that is where we're going to start from. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to make little marks, little marks coming forward on the tip of my brush. You could use, I think I used a bright Cambridge initially the first time I did this. So I guess what I'm saying here is any brush will work. But what you're going to want to do is there's a center line here 
And then if you think of this, I create a fan. Can you guys see it? Where I arc these little brush strokes out. Can I see the little brush strokes arcing out? Now we're doing. They're smaller back here, and that is atmospheric perspective. That would be atmospheric perspective. Because if we're doing the color stronger and more vibrant as they come closer, and if we're making the brush strokes smaller and more diminished as they're further away, we're utilizing our atmospheric perspective to create space and form in our painting. And I'm going to come forward. And then again, as I come forward, the brush strokes get bigger. See how they're getting bigger? Yeah. There we yeah. go. Layer one. Kind of like Ready Player One, but it's Ready Layer One. <laughs> Are you guys okay? Hopefully you're okay. Doing okay. I in your love the, the the color on this. Yeah, I love the, it. It's like my fave. I have to say the richness in this one versus the picture in picture. Actually, you know what? That picture in picture has got some funky color to it since we rebooted. Let me fix that. Oh, it's okay. It's off colored. I it's, can see it. I mean, I think we all get the point though. Watch this. Pow. See? <laughs> okay. So again, I'm going to just keep, you know, I'm going to come back here with this color and I'll little tiny brush strokes. But then as I come forward, I'm going to do a similar thing. Now, these will be up for the most part and then curve over towards the right. So it's up, 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 but then curving over towards the right when you're painting the brush stroke. Up, up, up. See how it's going up, up, but then you curve it over. Look at that. Just running that. There we go. That's a good purple. That's a nice start. Let's give ourselves another little row of lavender because we're diligent farmers in our minds. And we planted a lot of this so that I, they can make perfume. I tell you what, that if I was going to be a farmer, lavender. I would absolutely be a flower farmer. A flower farmer? Yeah. Because then you get bees and your farm always smells nice. And I mean, like, Oh, right. You put into this. Is this is this a plan for the future? I don't know. A lavender farm could be fun. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, let's just move to Provence. Just, I mean, like, if you had a field and you were going to fill it with something. Poppies. Flowers. Poppies, sunflowers, yeah. I would. I mean, you, you could still have an occasional horse walk across it, but it could be filled with flowers. Maybe wildflowers just sprinkled into a field. But I'm, I'm like, just going to keep going. I have to say, the neat and organized rows is kind of pretty. Now, if they're far away, make those brush strokes smaller, right? And they're farther away. Let's do the same thing on this side. So it's sort of big right here. And it does the same sort of curvy over thing. And you go forward. You just Paint that into the distance. Who doesn't love a little lavender rose? Little row, row, row. See, upward stroke, upward stroke, upward stroke. And then right here, let some of those go over. But this is much more upright. <laughs> Lexi's right. Hi, Lexi. I don't think lavender fields would survive in Houston. Actually, Lexi. Really? They're not supposed to because what they'll tell you if you take the tour, as I have taken the tour uh, of the lavender fields, Lavandin, um, in France, is that it only grows, oh, that's a little too late, it only grows in France in this one spot. But a bunch of people in Texas, in the hill country, um, <laughs> decided that they too wanted oh, French right. lavender and they actually have a festival and they have the real thing, not the counter counter copy thing apparently but the real thing that's what they say i didn't I like about that i didn't take the look i didn't take the plants to uh you know be tested genetically i just mm -hmm. you know i took their word for it um and i failed botany so keep that in mind <laughs> i would have just expected the whole field would just burst into flames in texas but i guess they're pretty rugged no, it's a, it's a it's a low it's a low uh uh it's it's a plant that does not use up a lot of water. But just have these little distant, you know, little marks. See, they're just kind of loose and almost like it's like fluffy, right? You're just painting a little fluffy distant. That's fluffy. 
I can bring this up a little bit more so that it's a little more resounding. And so now you can shape your your lavender a bit to talk some more about what you're dealing with. And I'm going to thicken and strengthen the brush strokes here, as you can see, improving that space. I want to give a shout out here to Kieran, who says hello from Kuwait. Hi! Made, made me laugh because I thought she, I thought it was saying that there was a lavender field in Kuwait. And I was like, holy cow, that was but there's trout, crazy. right? There's a trout farm? Oh. I heard there was trout in Kuwait because a guy who was really rich uh, migrated some trout there. And um, huh. and then they had so he can have trout trout fishing because he you know didn't want to travel for it. So okay, that's a I just saw a documentary. I've not been to Kuwait, um, but that's that's what I that's the thing that's my thought about Kuwait is there's a trout farm there, and now and they, also weirdly green spots of grass, and paintings by really good artists. Yeah, there we go. So see, we've gotten these all fluffed out, right? Is it fluffy? It seems it's fluffy. so fluffy. So now I'm going to take my, my red and blue again, making our fantastic purple. But let's add some white to that mixture, right? Adding a little white. So it's a, it's a lighter shade. And now I'm leaving a little bit of this dark to the background. And you're going to notice that I'm bringing little brush strokes up. Look at these little brush strokes. Lavender is about to just come out of nowhere, man. It's about to be out of nowhere. That's crazy. See it now? <laughs> just like, oh, look, we made lavender. Again, let it be a little bit darker back there. Let it be a little bit more relaxed. Keep pulling these brush strokes forward. Bigger. Stronger, curving them over. Remember that you've got the little shape that you're dealing with. There we go. Doing good, aren't we? Doing so good. Julie was saying that Hi, Julie. If, if we had a field of lavender in the backyard, that, that you would never be cranky. And I was like, <sighs> well, you're never cranky now. I am. John's just, he's just doing that husband wants to live thing. For 21 years. Husband wants to live thing. <laughs> you guys know what that is. That hus my husband wants to live. No, I think it'd be good. And so it suddenly I'm like a version of myself I never heard of before. Lavender would be nice. It's super calming. You could be calmed by the lavender. I'm going to need to be calmed by the lavender field after this live. <laughs> I actually really like how this is popping. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. quite a lot of fun. And again, like last time I used a Cambridge to get the lavender because you know how I love my Cambridges, but now I am just using a cat's tongue. Never feel like, oh, I've got to have one brush. I could have done this all with a round too. I'm going to just bring this up. And if you ever need to come back with like something more purple, you can always get right into your docks. Watch this. And look at that. You said, look at this. I, just, I mean, like my brain saw it, but I don't understand what happened. So, so you can always put that. The dioxazine purple to create a pop if you need it. Are you loosely mixing that on your brush? Yeah, just very loosely. Oh, okay. can, you show, over. can you show how you load that? So I'll just grab some of this color right here and I will mix it. All right. And then if you need a little purple, you can grab some. Okay. And then let's you're just going here and like, let's make sure that there's some little lavenders coming up here. Tap that... them. Remember, little strokes as they're far away and they can be bigger and more busy as they're closer to you. And is and then that, bend them if they're real close over the little row. Like that. That little over the little row. Shaggy, right? Yeah. That that loosely mixing on your brush, is that what helps create that that I would that? say in this it's not that loosely mixed. I would say here it's not like I might pick ah. up a little bit of color, but it's pretty incorporated through the brush. I see. see I just. So I would say it's the value between these two things that's helping me. Okay. Up here we'll just now at the up here I'm going to leave it quite dark at the base and just tip the top of it with this purple. So see, I'm leaving it quite dark. Yeah. I'm going to do that all the way through. I even come on this side and do a similar thing. Quite dark at the top. I mean, uh, at the bottom, and then just loosely. 
So it's like I'm implying that there's some light on the top of the lavender. There we go. Just painting those little lavenders. We'll come down and as we go forward, we can let them get darker as they get further away. There. Go ahead and look at that. That little row is sort of coming together, isn't it? I need that to be a little bit more purple, so I'm going to grab some of my purple and just put it in there. So right here, it can be a little bit bigger because it's closer to us. And then as it comes out, you can just, and then if I need to get it darker, I can always come back and I'm going to come back with this dark color and tap these little, these little rows with a dark color. So they're there, they're clearly purple, but they're just far away and they're dark. Now let's have some fun, yo. So let's get some of our purple and just some of our white. Right, we're going to get some of our nice little purple, a little bit dark, a little bit more decided. You know, come here and maybe take some of that great little shadow, right? A little value. Yeah. Right here. You really get it into, you know, right here. Let's go right here. Just a little bit. A little richness. Good to work some color through. Just a little bit. Now I like to get into the, the wonderful, delicious magenta. And I'll take that over to my docs mix. And through this center, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start warming it up. I'm going to take this warmer color. And it's going to be kind of in this little run of rows. A little bit. And make sure I've got enough white in it for it to show. Let's put that little lavender up there. Just a pinker area. So what we're doing is we're casting that warm light like what we did in the clouds. Through our piece right through the center here. So it's a little magenta into your purple with some white so you can see it. Now right here in the center, start to talk about that. Don't take it too far forward, leave that dark. And you can come back with this a little bit to at least right around here. Don't put it everywhere. It's about it being the focus of stuff that's happening. Just pull it some there. Oh, there you go. And then we're going to take some up here, right here to this spot, right? And let's put some back here. So we can see. Mixing up a little more so we can actually see it. That part can have a little bit of that there. So now I'm going to come forward. I'm going to do something kind of, it feels kind of intrinsically crazy. I'm going to take a little bit of my magenta and I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow. And there's a bit of the purple in my brush. I'm going to start adding that peach. Do you see that color? Oh, that yeah. peach right there. And 
be more magenta let it be more magenta and really really focus that color right there in that spot of light Rinse out real well, if you can. All right, and then you're gonna get, again, magenta, and a little bit of your yellow, some of your white, and you're gonna see this is quite a peach color. Put it right here. And it can be even a little more into the yellow, right? Look at that. Catch a little bit of that right here. Just focused a little bit right here so that we're creating almost a hot spot. I'm not going to take it all the way out. No, I'm not. Need a little more magenta in there. You get that on. See how we're doing? Bringing in that warm space. How do you feel about that so far? I like it. This is one of my favorite ways to do this. Okay. We're doing so good. Pull that out. Just make sure you got good color. You want to keep it in that row. Now you're going to rinse out. I'm going to pull out a little bit of my purple. It's okay if it's got a little magenta into it and quite a lot of white. Like quite a lot. Yeah. I'm going to come forward. It still needs to be distinctly purple. Go ahead and paint some of the lighter lavender with the bigger strokes. See how we're doing? Begin fanning those brush strokes as we come out. Here we go. Here we are. A little bit of lavender. And come forward with this, right? It's just a little bit here. And the reason it would be a little bit there, right, is that there would still be some light on this. It's, it's, it's all getting some light. Some of that light is quite warm. How are we liking our lavender? Quite a bit. Just using anything that you have, your bright brush, your cat's tongue brush, you're just making these little strokes, right? Finding that balance to create the lavender field that you dream about. Remember, you can always go back with purple. Take it out too light. Yeah, let's go back with some purple. Take it out too light. Now, rinse out. We're almost there, but not quite. I'm going to take a bunch of my yellow for that peach mix that I had. I'm going to get some white into it. I'm going to make a little bit of a light focus right there. See what I'm doing? Right there. Not anywhere else. 
right there. So what that's going to do is it's going to make a nice focal point for me of the light across my landscape. And when that's all done, you know, go through, make sure you're real happy with, you know, everything about how like your little lavender is, if you have to take any pieces back. It's a good time to evaluate and never be afraid to take that moment to look at everything and be sure that you're blended in the way you want to be blended. And that you're liking, oops, that's too much white, isn't it? If I have that, I just come back with a little purple. Look at that. And you're not going to be hurt, you know, by those layers. So that's my little lavender field. Hopefully that's your little lavender field too. I'm going to take a brush. I think I'm going to sign uh, maybe in this yellow and white that I've got coming over here. Uh oh, looks like I need to recondition that brush. Oh. <sighs> Happens. I'm just getting some of this warm color. I try to work with colors that are actually in my painting um, and that uh, won't pull the eye in a way that is going to be disruptive because I didn't do all that work to ruin it with the signature. <laughs> so think about where your signature is and how it's impacting your piece and everything that you've got going on. I'm ready to turn around. You ready, babe? Hold on a second. And, uh, okay. Let's see if I can zoom out on this while you're turning around. You go turn around. Okay. One, two, three. I'm still, uh, nope. shh. There you go. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> I guess I just lost faith in it at some point. All right. So you can see that when you get back from that, you can see the light that's coming down across the lavender. You can see that sunset, that, how those things could be built. It's one way to build them. There are other ways to build them. Gather as many skills as you can in your paint box and really enjoy this part of your journey. It's fun to paint different things, which is why I try to change it up so much. I'm really excited about what we're doing tomorrow. So hopefully we'll come back. We'll meet after and make sure our technical issues are all addressed. So that tomorrow's waterfall falls easily. Yeah. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.